Hey everyone, so this time of year, when we're heading into January of the next year, oftentimes you need to go back through your website and change every time that you use the year to the new year that's about to come. So if you write a blog post that says, it's titled, actually I've got one right here, uh, 11 ways to increase click-through rate and then in brackets 2021 and then you're moving into 2022, you're gonna have to go back to that blog post and change the title to 2022 so it doesn't look old and outdated. The whole purpose of having that year in brackets at the end of a blog post title is to give this sense of freshness to your blog post. So it's really important that you do update it or else your blog post looks really old and, and no one's gonna to wanna to click a 2019 blog post when it's not 2019 anymore. They're gonna click on the one that says 2020 or 2021 or whatever year that you're in. So here's a couple of examples of um, some blog post titles that have the year at the end. So you can see that often people just put the year in brackets at the end or they might do year and then space and then review written there or something like that. Uh, so I'll show you in this video how you can update them automatically so you never have to worry about this again. The year will always just roll over as soon as it hits midnight, uh, January the 1st, it'll roll over and update itself. So there's three ways that you can do it. The first one is you can go manually do it every year. And I'm sure many of you at this time of year are going, oh, okay, I need to go and do this. It's gonna take me a couple of hours to fix, you know, a couple of hundred blog posts that I've written all with the year in them. Uh, so that's the first way to do it. It's very time consuming. The second one is to use better search replace plugin and do it every single year. And then the third one, which is the method I'm gonna show you in this video is to just use rate math. You do it once, set it and forget it. And then every single year it's gonna update automatically. So uh, this is what it's gonna look like. And I'm gonna jump over to a little bit of a over the shoulder tutorial in a second, but it's gonna look like this, 11 ways to increase click through rate and then in brackets and then the percent current year and then percent. That's what we're gonna do in Rank Math. Make sure you've got Rank Math installed. So let's go over and have a look now. Okay, so here's my blog post. It's on nichesafari.com and I've got Rank Math installed. So I'm gonna click the little blue uh, red button up here. It should be green, but it's red. Uh, it's red if it's if it thinks that your SEO is not very good and I haven't really up, done any SEO on this one yet. So I don't even cut, cut, worry about those colors though. I'm gonna click into the preview of what it's gonna look like when it is in Google. So this is what it's gonna look like when it pops up in 11 ways to rank a blog on Google, brackets 2020. Actually, I'm gonna, this is what it would usually look like. It's just gonna look like your, your title tag is gonna look like your H1 tag. So whatever's written here, when you click into it, it's also gonna be seen in the preview, it's the exact same text. Sometimes you don't want that. So what you wanna do is you wanna do percent current year percent, just like that. And then you can see the year, so it's currently 2020, the year will pop up there. And that will always update. So on the 1st of January, 2021, which is in a couple of days, that's gonna to change to 2021 automatically. You can see I've got 2020 and 2020, like written twice here. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna to go to my H1 title, delete, delete. So now it says 11 ways to rank a blog on Google. But when someone looks at it in, uh, when it turns up in the search results, it's gonna have 2020 written in the title tag. I can put it in brackets, or I could write even updated 2020, just like that. And then that bit that's percent current year is always gonna be whatever year it is. Now, there are a few different uh, little title tag update, automatic update things that you can do with Rank Math. You can do the um, just percent title percent, which would just show the blog post H1, percent current date percent, which will come up with the exact current date, so 17 December, for example. Current year, will, which is what I just showed you, will come up with a year. You can do site name, which is, you know, my site name's Niche Safari, so that'll pop up if, with the percentages, or you could even do current month. So I'll jump over and do current month, for example. So instead of updated 2020, I'm gonna write current month and then current year. There we go. So each month it's gonna roll over, it'll be January 2021, then February 2021, and so on. Each month, it'll just automatically update itself. This can be really useful with a highly competitive keyword where everyone's got the current year in. You wanna look even more fresh than them, so you might wanna put in the current month as well. Now, so you should go through, if you've got Rank Math, go through and just do that current year percentage sign for every single one of them. And then next year and the year after and the year after, you never have to worry about it. 
A couple of things before I go, um, some cool things that you can do with Rank Math. I'm gonna do a whole full review of Rank Math. I really like it. I know some other people like Morton and Carl who are great SEOs and I'm sure they do an excellent job of ranking their blog posts. They say, oh, you don't need Rank Math and you know, respect to them. That's fine. I still use Rank Math because it's really uh, helpful for getting all of your technical SEO, your title tags and things exactly the way you want them in one really easy, simple plugin. So something you need to understand about titles and H1s, which I didn't understand for ages, the title is what appears in Google when you search for the blog post in Google. The H1 is what appears when you click into the blog post and those two can be different. So I'll show you with an example. This fake article, it's just written in Laura Mipson, 11 ways to rank a blog on Google. Maybe I know that people are all searching how to rank a blog on Google. And it's got the same in search intent, how to rank a blog on Google, 11 ways to rank a blog on Google. It's gonna have the same search intent, but 11 ways to rank a blog on Google might have a better click-through rate because it's got the 11 at the front. People are gonna see it more as like a Buzzfeedy listicle and they people like that, so they might click through it more. But I wanna target people who say how to and ways to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write for my H1, how to rank a blog on Google. So when you click through, that's they're gonna see how to rank a blog on Google. And I'm sending this message to Google that I'm saying, my H1 is how to rank a blog on Google. That's my exact target keyword. But I want a different title tag when people see it on uh, Google search because I want it to be a bit more, have a bit more flair. So I'm gonna go into my title tag here. And instead of just using the H1, I'm gonna change it to 11 ways to rank a blog on Google and I might do the year at the end. So people are gonna find this in the search results and that is gonna get a better click-through rate than how to rank a blog on Google. But because my title tag and my H1 um, are different things, I'm sending a message to Google that I wanna rank for both of these keywords. Now it's really important that both of the, the, those keywords or those phrases have the exact same search intent so you don't confuse Google. You can't just have two random search intents for the H1 and the title tag. You'll just end up not ranking for anything. So a couple of quick rules for different title and H1. They can be different, but they should have the same search intent. You can weave in additional target keywords into the H1 using this method. So I'll show you an example of this in a second. Um, and try to always keep the target keyword in there. So for example, in that last one, how to rank a blog on Google, the target keyword might be rank a blog on Google. And I've got ways to and how to, so that I'm saying to Google, look, you know, I'm trying to rank for this keyword, but here are a couple of different variations. They've got the same search intent, rank me for both of them. So let's jump over to another blog post I have, and I'll show you how I might mix up my H1 so that or separate the H1 and the title so that I rank for a few more of the sort of longer tail keywords that I'm already ranking for. Okay, so I'm over here in Niche Safari. I've only really got one blog post in Niche Safari at the moment is 19 best and worst display ad niches ranked. So I'm gonna edit this post. Okay, and I'm gonna change my H1 and my title tag so that they're different but have the same search intent to give send some messages to Google to rank me for a few more keywords. So I'm gonna jump over to Google Search Console and see, uh, I've got the, the page here, so this is what it's ranking, the page is ranking for. I'm literally, I've literally gotten 17 clicks in the last three months. What are people searching when they come across this page? They're searching niche safari, so they're looking for my brand name on Google. Uh, they're searching for New All Media because New All Media is discussed in the blog post. New All Media Review, Display Niche Ideas. So let's take Niche Safari and Display Niche Ideas and say, I'm gonna to try to rank number one for Niche Safari and Display Niche Ideas with this blog post. So I'm gonna jump back over to the blog post and Display Ad Niches I've got, but not Ideas. And people keep searching Display Niche Ideas and this, this page seems to be ranking somewhere for that. So I'm gonna put the, the phrase Ideas into my H1. So. 19 best and worst display ad niche ideas in brackets ranked. In fact, I might just do ranked out of brackets and then I'm gonna jump over to my H1, so, sorry, my title, and I'm gonna make my title a little bit different. How about uh, 19 best and worst display ad niche ideas, current year in brackets to make it feel as if it's fresh. And because people, when people search Niche Safari, this seems to be ranking somewhere in there. I'm gonna do separator and then site name. My site name's coming up as nichesafari.com. I actually don't want that. I want it to be niche space safari. So I'm, instead of the percentage site name, I'm just gonna write 
niche safari like this. So that's what it's gonna look like in, when it pops up in search, Google search, 19 best and most display ad niche ideas, year and then separator niche safari. And then I might just remove the 19 there. I don't need the 19. Best and worst display ad niche ideas ranked is what people are gonna see when they go click onto the page. And then 19 best and worst display ad niche ideas, 2020 dash niche safari is what they're gonna see on Google search. So it's the same, but I've weaved in a few additional uh, long tail keywords. I've made sure that niche safari is there because that obviously people are searching that when and this is coming up. So maybe I'll rank a little bit higher if I have niche safari written in the title. And I've got the year for a bit more freshness. So I've sort of uh, spruced up my title tag uh, so to try to increase my click-through rate. It's still got the same search intent and my H1 is a little bit more conservative. It's just the keyword. And that's what I usually do. I usually try to keep the H1 a bit more conservative, the focus keyword, and then my title tag a little bit more spruced up for a better click-through rate. Okay, so I might do a, a full rank math review. I've been planning on doing one of them for a while. Um, but just for this video, I just wanted to show you how to put the year in bracket so it's always gonna refresh and make sure it's in the title tag, but not the H1 tag. You don't really need it in the H1 tag, I don't think. Uh, so a few action tips um, at the end. Uh, make sure at the end of the year, change your current year using the current year percents uh, in the title tag on rank math so you never have to worry about it you know, at the end of December every year. And uh, yeah, use rank math to differentiate your H1 from your title tag. As long as they've got the same search intent, you can mix it up, try to insert a few more of the long tail keywords, for example, or try to have the title tag a little bit more, um, a little bit more fancy and, and easier to click than the H1 tag, which might be just the exact keyword. So if you've got any questions, leave them below. Um, or if you've got any other suggestions about Rank Math, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of things in Rank Math that I don't know about, that I'd love to hear about. So uh, let me know any more Rank Math tricks that you guys have got that I can use for my website. And good luck in 2021. I guess this is probably the last video I'm gonna do for this year. So uh, yeah, good luck with all of your sites in 2021. Hopefully it's a good year for all of us and a few more of us can you know, break into that higher income bracket.